why our pursuit of God and of the things that God has to offer must not decline. Every Christian must carry power in the last days. When we say these things, they are not religious by God. Every Christian must carry power. And when I say power, I mean real power. You must carry so much power that if you have to die, it should be that you are dying as a martyr. You are laying down your life, not because any man took it from you. Every Christian must carry power. You need to make up your mind. If there is nothing you hear from this service tonight, you should make up your mind that you must carry power. And from today, the pursuit of power must become cardinal in your Christian experience. There is nothing wrong in striving for power. In Luke 24, 49, Jesus said, tarry until you are endued with power. The pursuit of God is not just to have fellowship with God. Power is cardinal. He said, tarry until you are endued with power. Jesus gave that instruction. In Acts chapter 1, verse 8, he said, not many days from now you shall receive power. So Jesus himself knew that loving me, knowing me is not enough. You need power. Every Christian must make up their mind to carry power. The era of being a nominal Christian is over. The era of being a religious Christian is over. You must carry power. When you travel around the world, you are going to see the level of wickedness and darkness. Truly, Isaiah chapter 60 verse 1, the Bible said that darkness will cover the earth and gross darkness the people. He said, therefore you arise, shine, your light is come. There is gross darkness upon the people. If you don't arise and shine, the wickedness coming is massive. Don't be a lukewarm Christian. And any Christian or spiritual engagement you involve yourself with, make sure you ask the question, how does this work? And benchmark your progress by the level of results you have. Forget this gullible messages preached here and there that try to exonerate power from our Christian experience. So our gospel cannot hold ground anymore. There is wickedness around the nations and you cannot be a victim. You need power and you need to have it every day of your life. Every day of your life. I just returned from Pakistan. I saw, I saw fear. I saw terror. I saw evil of the highest order. My brother, when I applied for that visa, the first thing I noticed was the fact that the nation was called the Islamic Republic of Pakistan. That means you are entering an Islamic ecosystem ruled by the laws of Islam. And so you are a victim on arrival. When I entered that nation, I had to enter that nation as a tourist and as a philanthropist. Because you cannot enter that nation as a preacher. And so entering that nation was the risk of the highest order. From the airport, there was a full interrogation. I was thoroughly interrogated by the police, by the narcotic agent, and by the immigration. They searched everything I had. They made phone calls. They had to send a Christian police officer to get in there to intervene. I was to be arrested at the airport on arrival because my passport carried clergy. The world is dark. That nation is the second largest Islamic nation. It has 227 million people. You can't, you, you can't move around without power. There's wickedness everywhere. When I traveled into that ecosystem, the crusades we had, I'm going to do a, a documentary on my experience in Pakistan. The crusades we organized were in different locations, and we were only permitted to do one crusade per location. Because if you do a crusade today and you return the next day, you are coming to meet bloodshed. So it was a hit and run experience. And the way we organized it is such that when we, want to, when we organize the crusade, we come to a location, they sent out over 20 to 30 buses to bring people from other locations. Because the bait was that they told them the one coming is a healer. So they were coming to receive healing. And they had to bring people from other locations because they needed them to have the liberty to accept Jesus when that call is made. Because if you are in the location where the crusade is organized and you dare accept Jesus, you'll be killed. We wanted to have two crusades in one, one location. The police 
threaten the pastor that he will be charged to court immediately because they can't manage the violence. So we had to do hit and run in five different locations. It was that bad. They had to pay the police force over $6,000 so that we'll have 24-hour security. Even when I went out to give arms to the poor, there were police officers with live ammunition because anything can happen. So the Christian surviving, the, the pastor that invited me was imprisoned for eight months. He came out of prison not up to five months before this meeting. I'm telling you what's happening around the world. And I'm saying this so that you know that what happened in Nigeria is just, it, it, it's just one of the many cases. This one has gone viral, but it's what's happening every day all around the world. And so the need for power cannot be overemphasized. I had to live in the pastor's house with police, with surveillance, 24 hours. And in order to be able to host this kind of meeting where you have to bring all your audience from different locations, I mean, it's capital intensive. The pastor sold his car, sold most of his properties because the program, the five meetings cost over $50,000. That's the level of doggedness that these people have for God. The time for lukewarm Christianity is over. That time is over. Every Christian must have power. Spiritual power, economic power, political power, educational power. You must have that power. Because so much is happening in the dark. No wonder the Bible said the dark places of the earth is the habitation of cruelty. That's what we are seeing today. And you cannot afford to be a victim. You can't be a victim. Praise God. Tonight, I want to share with us briefly on a subject I titled Dominion by Power. Please, I need you to listen to me carefully. I want you to pay rapt attention. The subject of power is too important. I began by reading to us from Isaiah chapter 2, verse 2. I said, the Bible said in the last day, the mountain of the Lord, of the Lord's house shall be upon the mountains. And he said, it shall be exalted above all the hills. And he said, men of all nations will run to it and said, teach us the way of the Lord. For out of Zion proceeds the law and the word of the Lord from Jerusalem. We are in that season now where the attention of the world is on the house of God and on the people of God. Christianity and Christians are an endangered species. You cannot be a lukewarm Christian at this time. Whether you like it or not, so long as you are called a Christian, the attention of the world system is on you. The attention of the people of the world is on you. This is why you need power. This is why you must carry power. And when we are dealing with the subject of power, there are two dimensions to power. The first dimension to power is legislation. Legislative power is the ability to enforce the will of God so that your life and the context where you live will align with the purpose of God. Every spiritual engagement you carry out that is not able to bring legislation was religion, was a ritual. Until legislation is provoked, every activity is religion or it's a ritual. And so when power is on the scene, legislation takes place. And legislation is simply the ability to invoke spiritual laws that insist on the will of God and the will of God alone finding expression. The second dimension of power is litigation. Litigation is the ability to bring excesses, evils, and the things that are disaligned from the will of God to book and to ensure that a just recompense is furnished. So while legislation insists that the will of God find expression, litigation insists that every disalignment from the will of God receives a just recompense. These are the twofold expression of power. If this does not find expression, what we are doing is religion and what we are doing are sets of rituals. 
as a Christian, when you carry out any spiritual activity, you must watch out for legislation and you must watch out for litigation. I give you a story to explain what I'm talking about. The Bible said in Lamentation chapter 3, verse 22, it said to subvert a man in his course. He said, the Lord approveth not. That means when legislation is taking place, it says for the Lord's mercy that we are, we, are, we are not consumed. Verse 24, it said to subvert a man in his course, the Lord approveth not. That's Lamentation chapter 3. Now, that is, that is legislation. That means God does not allow that the will of a man is truncated, that the will or his purpose for a man is truncated. So if God wants you to live for 70 fruitful years, anything that tries to take you out of this world before you are 70, it is against God's will. And so power is the ability to insist that that man lives for 70 years and fulfills God's purpose. Now, that is what legislation is about. Litigation, on the other hand, is the ability to judge everything that tries to truncate the purpose of God for that man's life. So if legislation and litigation is not in place, then power is not in place. If power is not in place, then the will of God cannot find expression. In the New Testament context, we try to reduce this into five so that people can understand it. When power is in motion in the New Testament context, the first thing that happens is that demons